Okay, uh, this is part two of the Media Lab workshops on green screening. Uh, that's me from part one. Uh, handsome devil that I am. Uh, I will try and go through this as quickly as I can. Um, to which most of you will go, yay! Scott, going through something quickly. How unusual. Um, there's a few things that I want to highlight um, in the software and some things that uh, you'll run into. Now obviously we didn't set this up to be green screened initially. Uh, the lighting would have been a little bit differently but um, we kinda rolled with it to see what we can do. So here in After Effects I have uh, my one clip here from the uh, Asia box. So it's, it's running Apple ProRes uh, let's see here, right there and Apple ProRes 422 it's 1920 by 1080 and running at you know 30 frames per second so um, we've got our comp here and let me bring in the effects control window and I'm using key light in After Effects and it does a really good job it's made by the foundry who also make the uh, compositing software Nuke so, you know, it does a pretty good job uh, given what they're capable of doing. First thing you'll notice uh, is you have to pick a screen color. So what I'm going to do is disable this so you can see it. And I'll go through and apply some of the things that we have and then go and compare it to what we had started with. So uh, you may be tempted to just do, you know, oh, color key. Let's do color key and we're going to choose this and you see how how well uh, the color tolerance is being applied and you start to roll this out and you'll start to see where things you get to like oh, oh there's this balance that you kind of have to do here and you may double up on the color key just highlight the the high colors and the low colors and the variances in between all that uh, and then a good way to kind of check what you're doing is to turn off your background and look at your alpha channel and that will tell you exactly what your keys looking like uh, from using this type of, of approach um, edge thin you know, th this filter does show you exactly what this uh, these controls and other keying software or effect uh, packages is, is going to do so edge thin is how that edge is affected um, and also the edge feather is another way of you know making it not so nasty so um, you know playing around with these two things you can kind of get close to um, a key but as you'll see in a few minutes here let's just crank this back down to somewhere near normal that we've got a lot of holes in the video and it's a uh, it, it kinda turns out quite blocky and there's the the final result so you may be tempted to kind of duplicate this thing and you know let's let's roll this back out a little bit and uh, reset this guy so that you can see it's you know this is the key we're working on and we obviously need a, a key on the darker stuff uh, so we'll select that color and roll that out and you know you get a little bit better result and you want to come in and do some of this other you know maybe a key for this hard edge around me uh, but key light kind of does some of that stuff uh, all rolled into one and this is what we kind of come up with uh, the thing that I like about key light is you're able to view the different mats that you're going to be working in without having to fool around with After Effects views of whether we're looking at uh, color information or individual channels or alpha or whatever you can view it right here in the in the uh, effect which is very nice um, here's our screen color and you're gonna have to play around with the screen gain and, and balance so again let me turn that off go in here go in the keying and choose uh, key light and this is how it comes out of the box it's pretty default setting with a screen color of black um, so if we did have something on underneath here um, you kinda get an idea of what you're looking at so let's look at the screen mat and it's all white because we haven't really chosen a color yet so let's come over here to our color picker 
and I'm gonna pick something in there uh, and then let's go and look at our screen mat so it's doing an okay job but there's a lot of grain in here let's zoom in here a little bit and there's a lot of grain and anywhere where it's like close to black um, like any of these green or gray things means that our green screen and our key um, is not quite there yet. We want a good solid core mat and we also want detail in my fuzzy head of hair. Um, also I left this thing up here instead of masking out doing a garbage mat. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Because uh, there, there's a very fine like uh, chain in here. If we go and look at source. There's a chain that's kind of laying down through there. We, we want to be able to get that detail inside of hair or clothing or whatever else that we're trying to key. Um, so going for the garbage mat, uh, we may want to do something where we're really just interested in the stuff that we're trying to key out. And that's what we're trying to place our key on. So something like that. And now we want to view our screen mat. And we have a much tighter area in which to work. Um, screen gain is how much um, are we going to increase the whites and crush the blacks? And then you have this balance of in between the whites and the blacks um, of our image. And each keyer is different. Um, and there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to use key light. Andrew Kramer, of course, in After Effects does a wonderful job of this stuff. And so, you know, you, you kind of want to go through and, and really start to uh, find out what's going to work best for you uh, for your particular subject matter. Um, underneath screen balance, there's a slider. I don't know why they do this double thing uh, if there's only one value, but whatever. Um, screen pre-blur so as we crank this up you can start to see that our mat that we're pulling there's actually a blur applied just to the alpha uh, just to the the screen itself that we're trying to pull out um, which can help or hurt your results in the end so we're going to pull that back down and then we have the screen mat itself now you'll see some of this clip black and white and some of the other keyers we're going to talk about and uh, as you kind of, you know, black starts at zero and goes all the way up to 100, and white starts at 100 and goes all the way back down to zero. So if you want to invert your mask, that's that's kind of what you can do here. Let's go look at the final result. It does everything except me. So it's the opposite of what we're doing. And in some cases, you may get uh, better results or different results doing this route. And then, you know, inverting your alpha later on. Um, we're not going to do that. So put this back to zero, put this back to 100, and let's go look at the screen mat again. So we kind of want to go through and um, play with these until we get a nice solid white throughout all of the areas that should be pretty opaque. So we're getting there. We still got some some schmutz. My screen's dirty. Let me clean that off. Okay. So we got some areas down in here. Again, we can keep flipping back and forth between our our final res final result of our mat and our screen. Uh, combined mat is just a different way of looking at it. I, I just start with the screen mat. I don't know why. Just what I do. Um, crip, uh, clip rollback um, kind of pulls. You see those edges? So it's it's taking the where all that stuff meets and kind of pulling it inside or outside of that area a little bit so if you have any like like this fuzz here uh, as you start to roll that back you can minimize that but since we're masking that it shouldn't really show up anyway uh, this shrink or grow will actually grow or shrink the actual screen itself so if we shrink it back you know it can make me look really skinny um, and you're, you're losing a lot of that information that you would normally need to keep. So um, let's put that. You don't want to be um, cranking on these things as much as I'm doing in, until you, um, you know, you do that to figure out what's, what is it, how's it affecting my mask? How's it affecting my screen? What is it doing? You know, crank those suckers back and forth. Um, and that may be why they have these sliders here is to give you that idea of range. 
of where they can go. Go back to screen. So there's some areas of fuzziness here. Uh, there's some other areas in here that aren't as as uh, solid as we want. Uh, and we can go for screen softness. So after the fact is how do, how are we affecting those those edges? Um, if we look at the um, I can't even say that word despot black despot white. Um, you can see how it's affecting these edges over here. It gives you this, this like a little wavy curly stuff that when you sh look at the final result let's turn this on back here you can't really tell in this uh, area but it is that it's still there the, the mats still there and you not don't necessarily want this kind of information back there so you go through and you, you kind of figure out what these um, inside mask you know if we start to crank these things out what are they doing well you may have to look at a different view uh, and then find out okay here's my inside mask right so I'm, I just want to mask inside of that if I set it to none it's really not going to affect anything same with the outside mask if I go and put it on there it's only masking you know what's inside there and I'm not really sure why you would want to use those but I'm sure in, in, in some cases uh, they would become very handy for garbage matting and whatnot again to consult Andrew Kramer he knows this thing inside and out um, I typically try and get the job done as quickly and as painlessly as possible without too much fooling around foreground color correction is if we have some spill um, it will roll or attempt to roll some of that stuff out um, bring back the saturation so you, you kind of see what it's doing there uh, adjusting contrast, contrast and brightness within that shot edge color correction so anything around these edges here uh, <coughs> excuse me going to pull this this edge you have some green spill or anything along there um, you may be able to pull it out and so I'm just choking that thing back um, you can start to see it around some of those edges maybe hard to see in the compressed version but um, again this this edge grow if you make gross changes to it you can actually see where it's affecting that edge color correction so if you have some some hard edges and things that you want to pull back here's the negative aspect of it and you can start you still see a little bit of that contrast coming in there so I'm gonna put that back to zero and this is all all these things are trying to get you to a place where your um, your key is going to be as good as you possibly can get and uh, correct lighting as mentioned in the previous section of this correct lighting correct setup correct shooting of this is going to be really what makes a difference um, in your post processing here in After Effects or anything like that um, go back to here need to take this one edge back out you know and again if if nobody's sitting in this chair and it's causing you issues um, use your masking to take care of that and if this is a lockdown shot lucky you but if it's not you may have to go in there and do some rotoscoping to uh, pull that stuff out or you just want to sh show the floor now of course this mat mask isn't perfect there's some some edgy there uh, that you want to maybe roll out with some of the feathering in the mask down here mask feather you know maybe just 0 0.5 just to give it a little bit of fuzz and then come in and make sure you're really hitting that edge tighter than what I have going on here so again, you, you want to go in here and make sure that you're 
as clean as possible so you get a good edge. Like this chair over here might be a little distracting. You may want to come in and pull these edges as good as you can so that you're not, you know, adding to any of the distraction. Don't be afraid to zoom and pan around this thing. Look at that face. Yeah, I'm serious. Uh, go over here, you know, pull this back a little bit more to where the edge of the desk actually is. Okay, looks good. And so there's our, our key. Now I do want to point out um, as you come through here, and it should be, where's Carl? Carl walks across the frame here. There he goes. So if you do have something like this where you're like, oh, I want to see this guy walk across in front of the camera, our mask is not going to work as a static mask. You're going to have to animate that around the character. And as you can see with this motion, there's a lot of blurriness there. So um, really think about why you're doing the key and what you're trying to key. And if there's any motion involved, make sure you have a really well lit uh, scene uh, shot because otherwise it's going to be really difficult to come in here and delineate what this mask is showing. So um, this is After Effects and using key light. Let me turn this one off, turn this one on, see if it's any better. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's all black and white. Don't forget to put this back to final result. So, again, check your edges. And you really want to scrub through this to make sure that, one, you don't go outside of the mask zone. Uh, there I have the papers out. So you may want to come in here and add, you know, add some more points to your mask to compensate for that. Uh, this paper is kind of fluttering around, so what does it look like? And you really want to check uh, bits and pieces of this. Let's get Carl out of this shot there. No offense, Carl, but all right. And uh, you know, really take a look at the video because once once you look at it in motion, there may be flickering or um, uh, edges that are fluttering around that you're going to have to go back in and, and clean up. And you know that the paper disappears there, but overall the key looks pretty good, um, given the fact that we didn't light it at all uh, for the green screen. Um, let's go back to that and go to source, and let's come in here and view options and turn off masks. Okay, um, so you know let's also. Turn the mask all the way off. Come on here. Opacity zero. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, let's just get rid of it then. Um, you can see, you know, there's a big dark spot of a shadow there. There's a shadow over here. This is really nice in here, um, but it, it's it's really falling apart on the edges, and you really want to be careful of those things when you go and shoot this, so that um, you don't run into these really really hard difficult keys with all these bad spots and places. Uh, everywhere else. So uh, that's After Effects, and again, you don't have to use Keylight, but it does a really nice job, and it gives you some tools within the plugin and effect that, uh, like this source of view, that uh, really gives some insight into the key that you're pulling. Uh, sure. Okay, the next thing that I want to show you um, is motion, and um, this. The keyer that I use is specifically geared towards DV footage. And in my part one, uh, I talk about how DV footage is really not optimal for um, any kind of keying because of the color compression and the information that you're giving it. <coughs> Excuse me. However, DV Map Blast, let me bring up the inspector here. Uh, this is one of my favorite, favorite keyers. It's a hundred bucks. For DV Map Blast, there's DV Map Pro, and then there's Conduit, which we'll get to later. That you know, DV Map Blast is a plugin for motion. It'll also plug into Final Cut Pro, um, After Effects, I think, uh, as well as Photoshop. So 
it gives you a wide variety of applications in which to use it. But I typically like to do it in motion um, because of Thanks, Carl. you know let's let's turn off the audio here uh, for this guy because we don't need to hear me talk. So I'm gonna come in here and turn it off. And uh, so. Motion really takes advantage of our graphics processor to do this kind of stuff real real time. So I'm just going to go and hit composite, and uh, I barely burped uh, playback on this. Now it's a little bit slow, and I'm recording video at the same time. So um, and I'm on a laptop, but um, it's really nice to see your key kind of in full motion here, uh, and, and being able to to see it in real time because you're, you're going to save some some workflow time. Uh, being able to view it and scrub through it in real time as opposed to After Effects where you kind of have to build that RAM preview. Now, um, let me go and take this off because this is not a difficult key to use. It's probably the best 100 bucks that you could ever spend for keying. Add Filter, DV Garage, DV Matte Blast. I'm going to pick a high color, which is the light color in the scene. I'm going to pick a low color in the scene and I'm going to switch from foreground to composite and I have a pretty darn good key right out of the box um, and then I have further adjustments here now in motion let me just turn this in motion I'm gonna hit shift A to go and look at my alpha channel and there's some work that needs to be done with this and of course I can add my masks and all that but I'm pretty confident that um, DV Map Blast is going to do what I need to do. Now I have my black point, I have my in and out point, detail gain, and some spill sliders. Um, again, this this is such a an easy key to um, do work with that uh, you really don't have to do too much to these things to uh, get it where you want it. Um, so I'm going to go there. The floor is giving me problem. So I can if I crank the detail gain up, it gets a little blocky around the edges. Um, and if need be, again, I'd pull a mask over there to get rid of that junk if it's not necessary for the shot. Um, hit Shift C to look at my color information again. I'll turn on my background so I can see what my key looks like. Looks fairly decent. Um, let's go put my mask on. With this junk over here. Where did you go? Okay, not sure why that's happening. It could be just I ran out of memory in motion. It happens. Um, so you have your. Uh, let's see if the square one works just in case. No, it goes back to hand. Uh, it does that. If, if motion ever goes to this hand thing, it's basically ran out of uh, RAM. It's it's pretty big resource hog. So um, if this happens to you, just quit uh, motion uh, after you save and come back, and it should function normally. Um, but, you know, let's see if we can crop the thing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, and it, this is also, you know, a good way to kind of see what your mask is doing. Because see that that edge right there? You can see the difference of um, the screen that you're pulling and what's behind it. Now, if it's not noticeable to you and it's not distracting, hey, you, you could probably get away with it. But um, again, you want to take a look at the alpha channel, turn your background off so you can see that over there. It may be so faint that you can't see it. Um, let's go in and look at it. Look at it 200%. Uh, doo -doo -doo, let's put my hand, come over here. And again, you, there's just a little bit right in here that you can see it's got some dirt to it. Uh, and again, you may want to just. Um, you know, come in there and clean it up with a mask. Turn that back on. So I really like the DV Matte Blast. Um, again, in here, you still have uh, in your filter, you have Keen, you have a blue green, and you have Primat, which, you know, if you go to blue green, I don't know why it defaults to blue. Uh, there's green, 
and color level. Oh, hey, you can see how bad this thing is uh, at really doing something when you don't have the proper footage lit correctly. But you can get it to, to be a, a workable thing, but there's a lot of spill in it, um, which you'll then have to apply another thing to it and, and, and start to fool around with what you have um, back here. And again, you can play it in real time. So blue-green screen uh, works. You have also Primat, which is much like um, your key light. So if I'm looking at foreground, I want to have this backing color. Let's look at the matte. Uh, this backing color, you can come in here and mess with individual RGB values, which is pretty cool. And you can do auto sample for red, green, or blue. Um, replacement color so whatever it's keying out in this spill you can replace it with green, uh, gray and matte density is again you, you have some some sliders but as you crank them around you kinda go past the point of no return on some of these things spill suppression how much you're taking out of the, the image if you look at it since so you process foreground uh, as you increase it you're gonna either be pushing it towards the blue and red channels because you're subtracting the green out of it so um, definitely take a look at it and primat's really good if you have a really good green screen but um, much past that uh, you know, it's kinda difficult to work with it doesn't give you as much control uh, and again my favorite is DV matte blast it's literally a two you know apply the filter pick the high color pick the low color and it does a really nice job with TV footage. The last thing that I want to do uh, is show you conduit. Uh, and the reason I want to show you this is there's this one function that allows you to do right here live video. So I usually take this setup uh, with me on shoots with my laptop. Uh, I plug in a firewire uh, source out of the camera or if you have a breakout box or anything that you can push into the, the, the MacBook Pro or your computer that is running conduit even your eyesight uh, when I had the eyesight running up here with the green behind me I could pull a key uh, using the software live now also in this output viewer there's this button that says record so I can do a live key with this software and it also happens to be node based compositing so um, here's my input and these are all my nodes that I have kind of wired together so there, there's other things that um, you know you may want to adjust so if we do let's go back to let me find my levels I'm gonna all uh, yeah, doo -doo -doo. here's levels so if I want to um, make some adjustments to my levels I double click on there and I can affect my input black white my gamma levels and my output and and, and for black and white as well um, and I can use this to kind of have another thread of image manipulations and then bring that back into what we're doing later so if I wanted to color correct this thing uh, make some color corrections um, before I pull my key or after I pull my key I can use node based compositing to really start to affect what I'm doing so maybe I want to uh, have some exposure adjustments let me double click make sure we're, we're hot with that so you know maybe we want to do a little bit of boosting that um, the sliders around so let's pull that green uh, and then maybe we don't want that much so then <clears throat> if I wanted to I can pull this whoops pull this noodle into my color difference key to see how that looks in the overall thing and you, you can see where it's starting to affect the desk and everything else um, so you can really start to have some presets wired up here and combine them into really unique ways using node based compositing but let's talk about the key so I have an input node 
it's going through a color difference and again I can look at my mat which is really nice because it's just showing me my mat I don't have to turn off my background I can see where some noise is uh, back here I can play uh, the Thanks, video footage which is again it's huh? using that real-time stuff uh, that's true I guess leave it open and then I'm talking over myself which is awesome so um, you can kinda see what this color difference key is doing we're gonna take out green and this is where um, knowing a little bit about uh, how these things work uh, a great book by Stephen Wright uh, digital compositing for film and video talks about what these things are average of second and third channels max min on how you actually devise a green screen um, you can actually use the nodes that are present in conduit and other node based compositors to roll your own key and there's plenty of examples in the book it doesn't matter what uh, software you're using it actually tells you you know okay well we're gonna take the difference between the red and uh, red and blue channels and subtract the green from it then we're gonna do an overlay uh, or some transfer modes to kind of put together your own keyer and that knowledge is really helpful when you start to mess with node based compositors like conduit or nuke or fusion or any of the other um, packages that are out there so we have a color difference uh, node and so you know whenever you, you select one of these this is you know that's what you're working on for each of these things so it is contextual be careful what you're doing and then when you want to actually just view that specific node you double click on it that's the same in shake or nuke or any of those other ones so here's uh, let's go put this back to you composite and you know if we um, let's see oh, let's come back here oh, green average second third so let's go look at our mat there it is we look at our output and look at our composite. So um, if we go second channel, you know we don't really see that much of a difference. Um, there we do. So it's blue, blue screen red. Average of those two things together, the maximum of those two things, and then the minimum, which again takes away that desk. So you may be able to play. Uh, with some of the subtraction modes of how this thing gets uh, kind of rolled together or composited together. Despill, we're just going to remove some of the green. Um, if we, you know, I do like this uh, little button bypass. You just turn the node on or off. And again, a lot of node based compositors have that as well. So you can bypass that node to uh, continue down the chain, but really just turn that specific effect or function. Uh, off and on so you can do a comparison of the two uh, it's doing a pretty nice job of bypass or uh, despilling the green out of the overall shot it just pushes it a little bit more towards uh, towards the red channel to get rid of it now we're taking this that you know it's a pre multiply we, we've talked about alpha channels in the past where you know is it a straight alpha or is it pre multiplied so whatever is black um, is used as an alpha and the little description here pre multiplies the image against black based on alpha so that's what we're doing here then we take an over node we wire that into the foreground we have our background image going into the background and we're shooting that out through the output uh, this little thing here um, we can wire in foreground opacity so maybe you know you can wire different things in to get different results uh, of, of using a mask or, or roto uh, as it's called and, and shake so you can do your masking in what's a, a roto uh, mask or anything like that now math here's where you would kind of use some of those things to uh, you know subtract the the other channels so maybe if you go through and let's see channels Let's separate RGB so we can take all these things and, and move them over. We're going to separate RGB so when you put something in here, it's going to give you RGB and alpha. And then your math, you can have a subtract. So we may need to do a uh, combine or a blend or an addition um, to get our 
red and blue and green things uh, channels out. So we look at that. That's you know we're just viewing one of those channels. So let's take the red and the blue, and that's what we're getting. So let's take the green and, and subtract the the green and the red, or take the green and subtract the red. Oh, that's looking kind of nice. So now we can use something like uh, let's see. There's my levels. And start to pump up um, what we have there. And then we may need to invert that or subtract this information from our original. So there's all kinds of ways that you can roll your own um, stuff, I guess. Uh, roll your own key so we're gonna take that away from our original and so you can start to see how we're affecting or pulling our key so maybe we need to you know invert this and there's all kinds of nodes in here uh, that will there's our invert and we'll add that node there so you know, if we've screwed something up and we don't want to mess with it, we can just flip that channel. Um, you can add the blur to this so that maybe um, you know you have a nice core mat, but now you want to create a um, an edge mat. You can start to play with it. And then you know, there's there's a hundred and different hundred different ways to do this, and uh, you can always do these comparisons because you know you just come over here and double click on that that output node or the final node in the chain, you can see exactly what's happening, and compare the two uh, outputs from node-based compositing without having a whole ton of layers, and it's really visually um, more of a, a storytelling. Uh, uh, explanation of what's happening to your input so you have this input and you're separating the RGB then you're subtracting some of those things then you're adjusting levels you know you may even want to say oh I, I don't want this level here I'm gonna shake it and that's actually where shake gets its name is you shake the node to get rid of it um, then we're gonna just um, apply it to just the green channel so here's here's what we're doing to that that green channel maybe we want to adjust it or color correct that uh, to give us what we want in the end result. So again, a hundred different ways to do it. Node-based compositing kind of walks you through and, and visually explains what's going on and how you're procedurally affecting the inputs and images that you're doing. So I hope that uh, doesn't confuse you more, but my recommendation would be to, to get something like DV Blast or Keylight watch a few tutorials, do a lot of test shots on set while you have the actors and the green screen and your lighting all set up uh, and really do some tests on set to make sure that you've get, you're have you getting the best possible key and don't sacrifice anything where you're like, ah, oh, fix that later. Now you gotta fix it there on set because later you might realize that, oh, I can't fix this anymore and I'm gonna have to do a workaround or, or live with something uh, later on. Conduit's a really good application to do it live there on set and, and feed in a firewire feed. Um, you can see here that um, if I wanted to put in a file or do live video, let's click over to there. There's the built in eyesight. Let's hit play. And hey, there I am. So, um, you know, it, it's really um, a nice. Uh, workflow to be able to have that uh, let's go and pull another one actually let's do this first one though. there's one with a white shirt let's, let's open that and the the good thing is it's just like in um, oh maybe on there we go uh, in other I'm really bothered by myself there in other uh, applications you know you might have to do some layer manipulation and duplicate layers in order to get the the core mat and the edge mat and 
you know the the actual key to function and do what you want um, where node based compositing you know, let, gives you a little bit more flexibility so um, again you know, there's plenty of tutorials out there. I, I hope that this kind of gave you a good overview of the differences between different software packages and, and doing something in, in After Effects or you know.